In this video, we will go over several troubleshooting steps and the corresponding solutions for the Murray Eco 110. When power is supplied, 60 Hz is displayed, indicating the power consumption. Then, the temperature of the water at the unit. If you're in Fahrenheit mode, this will be the only temperature displayed. If the heater is reading in Celsius, then it will show the current temperature and also the requested temperature. If the heater is in standby mode, then there will be a dash before the temperature, and in Celsius, there will be two dashes where the requested temperature would be. If you want to cycle between Celsius and Fahrenheit, put the unit in standby mode and press the up button. It will cycle through your options. Then, press the power button again to turn the heater back on. An E1 error code happens when the heater reaches an outlet temperature above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This usually happens because of a quick drop in water flow and will usually resolve itself once the heater reaches a lower operating temperature. To correct this, either reduce the requested temperature or increase the water flow. An E3 error code indicates a temperature sensor failure. This failure can occur either at the inlet or the outlet temperature sensor. Majority of the time it is the outlet temperature sensor that has failed. It is located on the left of the water heater on the front of the outlet fitting, as seen here. Before going any further, make sure to turn off the power supply to your heater from the breaker. You can complete this repair with the unit still hung on the wall, but will need to close the cold water shutoff valve to the unit prior to performing the repair. For the purpose of this video, I will be performing the repair with the unit removed from the wall and on a workbench. Start out by removing the wire retainer. Follow the hot water outlet sensor up to the connection point indicated on the board as temp2. Remove the wire and unscrew the faulty sensor. Screw in the new sensor and leave the wire back to the connection on the board, making sure to go under the power wires. Next, reinstall the wire retainer, making sure not to pinch any wires in the process. Hang the unit back on the wall and replace the front cover before resupplying the power to the unit. At this time, the unit should read the incoming water temperature. If it still displays E3, then replace the inlet temp sensor and make sure that both the connections at the power board are secure. The next problem we will go over is no display when power is supplied to the unit. Make sure that the power wires are correct as seen in the Eco 110 installation video. If the wiring is correct, then shut off the power to the unit to confirm that the ribbon cable for the display board is secure in its location at the power board. And if all looks okay, then check to make sure that the red button on the overheat sensor has not popped up. Press down on the button. You may hear a distinctive clicking sound. Once the overheat has been reset, reinstall the front cover and resupply power to the heater. If the unit is heating inadequately or not to spec, then we will need to confirm the power through the unit. 
This should be done with extreme caution. Only attempt this step if you have a safe working knowledge of electricity. While the unit is running, remove the front cover and place it on the upper right corner, leaving the ribbon cable in place. First, we will confirm power being supplied to the unit. Put the black probe on the ground and the red probe on L1, then L2 of the terminal block. Both should read roughly 110 to 120 volts. Then confirm 220 volts by placing the black probe on L1 and the red probe on L2. Next we will confirm power running through the unit. Place the black probe on the ground at the terminal block, then the red probe on each electrical connections on the side of the heat exchange. There are four in total. Each location should read roughly 110 volts. If there is a failure on one of these points, then replace the corresponding triac. Confirm 220 power by putting the probes on both outer electrical connections on the side of the heat exchange, followed by the two inner connections. If you have an amp meter, you can read the amps by clamping over each individual wire leading to the overheat sensor. With max power, neither side should read more than 25 amps. Now we will discuss replacing a clogged inlet or malfunctioning flow sensor. Sometimes the impeller sending the information to the PCB will get clogged by sediment or debris and requires replacement. Remove the unit from the wall and place on a flat surface or workbench. Remove the two screws securing the black flow sensor on the face of the water inlet. Next, remove the bracket that secures the inlet. You can choose to disconnect the inlet temperature sensor from the PCB, but in this example, we will show you how to do it while leaving it connected. While unscrewing, make sure that the wire twists evenly throughout the length of the wire and is not isolated to just above the sensor or it may break. Now, loosen the connection on the heat exchanger to remove this fitting. Reinstall the new fitting with the supplied water flow sensor attached. Make sure that you did not lose the rubber o-ring that goes in between the fitting and the heat exchange. Secure the fitting to the heat exchange by making sure the connection is tight. Remove the zip tie securing the old flow sensor and also the wire retainer. Next, disconnect the flow sensor from the PCB port labeled Watcher and remove. Weave the new sensor under the power wires and plug back into the corresponding port. Be mindful that the plug clip can only be installed in one direction. Before reinstalling the inlet, twist the inlet temperature sensor wire counterclockwise about three times to prevent the wire from twisting when installing. To ease in the installation of the bracket, put the screw in the center hole before reinstalling the bracket. Make sure to install the second screw. This completes the basic troubleshooting and repair for the Murray Eco 110.